Thank you for that. Um, have you reflected on why you think math mathematicians are comfortable with being uncomfortable? I think you just get used to it. I think you just, I think you learn. So I think it is about expectation. I think, I think that uh, they expect to feel uncomfortable, which I think is a really big part of it. Um, and so I don't think that they're afraid of, um, they're not afraid of trying, they're not afraid of getting their hands dirty, and they're not afraid of feeling slightly out of their depths at times. Um, I think it's about, I think a lot of it is down to uh, teachers who instill that confidence in the students that they, can, they will sometimes feel uncomfortable and it's okay. Um, incidentally, actually, of the nine PhD students that I spoke to yesterday, that I interviewed at length yesterday, um, every single one of them had a teacher at school that they really uh, were still in touch with and they felt had made a really massive difference to their mathematical education. So I think it is about that support um, and also just that expectation that, you know what, it's not... You can't expect to just see a, a brand new piece of mathematics and get it immediately. Nobody in the world does. Even the best geniuses don't. You know, it's about, I mean, it's essentially a language. And when you're reading a page of a language that you've never seen before, of course it's going to be difficult. Um, so I think it's, yeah, it's those two things. It's the support and encouragement of, of, of role models, effectively, people who've kind of been with them through the process. And I think it's about expectation. I've got two questions, but they're related. Okay. Uh, where did your love of mathematics come from? And related, do you think there is a difference between boys and girls? Ooh, good questions. Okay, um, I also had a maths teacher who I really adored, who was very, very supportive <laughs> and uh, really encouraged me as an, you know, sort of developed me as an individual. Um, so I think that's part of it. But I also think the, it, it's about the more effort I put in, the more, the more I like it. Um, and I think that, you know, at every stage, so, you know, GSSE, A-level, undergraduate degree, PhD, postdoc, lectureship, every, at every stage I just fall more in love with the subject because I just find out more about what it can do. Um, and in terms of the differences between boys and girls, so I think it is about confidence. I think it's about self-efficacy, right? Um, so there's been a couple of studies. Self-efficacy self is slightly different to self-confidence. Self-efficacy is, is a very quantifiable thing about how likely you believe you are to be able to complete a particular task. Um, and there's been a couple of studies about this which show that self-efficacy in maths over anything, uh, over any other subject, has a really big impact on whether or not you are capable to achieve that task. So it's not about your innate ability necessarily, it's about your belief of whether you can do it. And I think that self-efficacy is something that I have seen a difference in between boys and girls. I think, um, I think girls are much more likely to uh, think that they're, if, if they're struggling slightly, they're much more likely to think that they're the problem rather than that the maths is difficult. Because sometimes maths is difficult, you know, I mean, we all know that. Sometimes it is just tough. Um, but it's about sort of giving them the, the confidence and uh, the belief that they can do it, but they have to sort of put in the work. You know, these things don't come completely naturally. But that's certainly something that I've seen in my students. I often actually, I, it's, it's very, you, I mean, these are much older students, these are university students, but I've just lost count of the number of times I've had girls come in to me and say, I'm not capable, I can't do this, I need to just, I can't do it, it's just, it's just beyond me. And all you need to do is give them a little bit of cheerleading and be like, don't be ridiculous, look at your results here, look at your results here, just, you're being, you know, come on. And then they go off and they absolutely smash it. And it's just that the, the number of girls that come to me with that worry versus the number of boys, it's just a really dramatic difference, I think, anyway, from my own experience. Math seems to be eternal in its... Do you, do you ever think there's a point where you can ever stop learning? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because, for one thing, you forget stuff that you learned before. So, <laughs> going right around. Um, but, no, I don't think so. I, th I don't think so. I also think that mathematics is just phenomenally creative. And I think especially... I'm so lucky in the, the area of mathematics that I'm working in, which is about human behaviour. Because, for starters, it's so new. I mean, there's, we just didn't have this opportunity before. Whereas now, we, we really understand about how people are moving, how people are using transport, all of these sorts of things, how people are committing crimes, all of those things that we, which we didn't have data for before. And so I think, um, you know, this is a, an area where you can just have completely new and fresh ideas and then, uh, you know, learn about what other people are doing and putting that all together. So I think that maths is growing as 
as, you, as people are as individuals, in the, as mathematicians. Um, yeah, I don't think you can ever stop one learning. Thanks. Uh, do you have any recommended strategies as sort of a go-to place, or do you pass on to your students any recommended strategies? Uh, strategies in what sense of how to cope with things? Well, if you're coming across, uh, get to a dead end, or you see a problem and you just don't know where to, where to go with it to start with, mm. do you have like a, almost like a mantra that you go through or that mm. you teach to go through to get into the problem? Well, so I have a slightly different tactic, um, which is that uh, when I first, when my students first come to me, um, I deliberately break them down. <laughs> um, so I, I set them, um, uh, I ask them, this is their first homework question when they come to me, I say, should we build a third runway at Heathrow, right? And every year they all completely panic because they're like, but what's the right answer? What's the solution? What's the, I need to see a worked example. I don't know what you want me to say. What do you want me to do? And so like, I don't care what you do. You know, I, I, I don't care what perspective you answer it from. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't care. Off you go. So I, uh, and then, but they always, always manage to do it. So I sort of drop them in it and then give them their, their results back very quickly and just demonstrate that actually they're completely capable of independent learning. They're completely capable of working through problems. Um, and so I sort of use that as a process to build them up, you know. Um, so uh, rather than uh, saying, okay, you're stuck on this traditional route, how do you solve it? I sort of deliberately make them stuck um, and then see, and then prove to them that they're capable of getting out of it themselves. Hi, good morning. Uh, with regard to your model making of those amazing, uh, fantastic sort of models with regard to uh, movement of people, whatever, what would be your model if you were creating the perfect mathematics teacher? Ooh. <laughs> uh, okay, gosh, goodness. Well, so certainly somebody who's very enthusiastic, certainly somebody whose passion for the subject really shone through. Um, I think somebody who also nurtured individual uh, talent and creativity within a student. And I think somebody who really was understanding about the fact that it isn't always easy. I think somebody who sort of did that cheerleading role as well as the stretching role, um, but was very enthusiastic too.